after Lotte May years, uh, man the leaf. He combines all the knowledge of this uh, previous scientist, okay, and then and then uh, plus his own uh, found his his own findings, and then uh, he develops the first periodic tables, okay, the first periodic tables. Uh. Before this, they just uh, see the the change of the chemical properties periodically, okay, the relationship, some relationship between this. Uh, uh, the chemical and the physical properties and the change, okay, the periodical change. But Mendeleev he developed the first periodic table. And uh, according to Mendeleev periodic tables, uh, okay, he arranged the elements according to the ascending orders of atomic mass. Uh, atomic mass is the nuclear number. Uh, this atomic mass is equal to the nuclear number. Nuclear number. He arranged uh, the elements uh, in ascending orders of atomic uh, nuclear number and put all the elements that have same chemical properties in the same group. So what he do is like the, the first elements, let's say the nuclear number is 4, okay. the next one let's say is uh, 6, uh, another one is uh, maybe 9, okay. another one maybe 13, okay. another one maybe 18. Okay. Now, uh, let, let's say next one, let's say 21, okay, 21, uh, if it has same chemical properties as the first one, then, it, uh, then he put this, uh, the, the, this, these uh, elements in, in the same group with this one. So those have same chemical properties is under the same group, eh? and then they are arranged in the ascending orders of the nuclear number or atomic mass, eh? okay, increasing from 4, 6, 9, 13, 18, 21, and so on. So that's what he do in his uh, periodic table. Then he left, he left empty space in the periodic table for elements that haven't been discovered at that time. So for example, so let's say uh, just now 4, 6, 8, 13, okay, 18, uh, let's say 21, okay. Now, let's say the next one is 27, okay, 27. When he puts 27, uh, the, the element here, then he found that these elements and these elements, the chemical properties are not the same. Are not the same, eh? so so he move these elements. Eh? He move these elements to next group, the twenty seven. He put here, and then he leave an empty space here, okay? Because he realized that there are elements that's not yet found at his time, so he leave an empty space for the elements that haven't been discovered at that times, okay? So that is what he did. Eh? Although he arranged the elements in the standing orders of the atomic mass, uh, but uh, in some cases he changed the order if the chemical properties of the element did not match its group. For example, uh, for example, this one. Now this one is in your periodic tables. Uh, antimony, tellurium, and iodine uh, is here. Okay, antimony, tellurium, and iodine uh, in your periodic tables. Uh, the notes. Uh, okay, so this one. There's a mistake here. Both tellurium and iodine, uh, they have same uh, this atomic mass, right? Okay, so do some corrections here, okay? This one uh, should be 127.6, uh, not 126.9. In the periodic table that I gave you, this one, okay? I show the same atomic mass. Uh, I give you the same atomic mass, uh, which is not correct. So do the corrections here, okay? Change, change this to uh, 127.6. Now, according to Mendeleev, okay, because he arranged the 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 elements are in ascending orders of the atomic mass, right? Okay, so one two one point eight. Now one two six point nine should be here. Okay, this should be one two six uh, one two six point nine. Means iodine should be here, and then this one two seven point six. Uh, the tellurium should be here. Okay, if if you want to follow the rules uh, in ascending orders of this atomic mass, uh, iodine should be here and tellurium should be here. But then he found that if he put iodine here and tellurium here, then the chemical properties of iodines uh, is not the same with this uh, with the other elements in this group. So he changed the positions of uh, iodine with tellurium. Okay, even even though tellurium has higher atomic mass, uh, but he still put tellurium in front of iodine because the chemical properties of tellurium is similar to the elements in this group, and the chemical properties of iodine is similar to the elements uh, in this group. Okay, so he mixed uh, 
this uh, this is exceptional case uh, okay so he changed the orders he changed the orders uh, that is what he did okay at the time he don't know why he don't know why uh, the orders uh, at this place uh, okay the arrangement is not in order he don't know why but he just he just did that okay but he can't explain that uh. so that is what uh, he did uh, man the leaf just now we we learned that he leaves some empty space in the periodic tables right okay then he used the periodic tables to predict the existence of the properties of unknown elements those elements had yet to be found they still haven't found that elements yet eh? but uh, Mendeleev can use his periodic his periodic tables to predict uh, the properties of such elements so for example eh? for example at the times they haven't found they haven't found this uh, germanium and also they haven't found this gallium and also this strong team so they haven't found this strong team and gallium and germanium so they know nothing about these uh, strong teams galliums and germanium but man believe he can use his periodic tables to predict the properties of strong teams gallium and uh, germanium but at the times uh, he don't know the name yet okay yeah uh, so these things still have no name eh? so he called this eka boron this one is called eka aluminium and uh, this one is called eka silicon now eka means uh, next next okay so this is silicon so next to silicon so the element next to silicon the element next to aluminium in his periodic tables, uh, okay, strong team. This strong team is uh, is is below boron. Uh, okay, so he called this X uh, Eka boron. Okay, Eka borons. So he predicts. Uh, he predicts the properties of Eka aluminium, Eka borons, and uh, Eka silicon. So uh, let's see one example. Uh, one examples of his predictions uh, to see how accurate his prediction is. So let's see this uh, Eka silicon. Uh. Eka silicon actually is germanium. So according to Mendeleev, uh, he said this Eka silicon, okay, the atomic mass 72, density 5.5, high melting point, the color is gray, okay, uh, refractory dioxide, oxide density 4.7 is basic, and then the, his chloride has boiling points below uh, 100 degrees Celsius. And the chloride density is 1.9 okay so this is predicted by Mendeleev at the times nobody know about this Eka silicon yet he just predict and then so after that scientists uh, found germanium they discovered they discovered germanium and this is the properties of germanium uh, atomic mass 72.61 density 5.35 okay and this is also considered high melting point okay the color now from here we can see that uh, how accurate his predictions even though he don't know about he don't know anything about germanium uh, but he can use his uh, periodic tables to predict the properties uh, the properties of this uh, uh, germanium so it means that his periodic table is very useful and is very accurate uh. so that is the contributions of Mendeleev uh. next uh, mostly Okay, mostly uh, he modernized the periodic tables. Uh, okay, so he he take uh, Mendeleev periodic tables and then he do some modifications. Yeah, modifications on these Mendeleev periodic tables, and make it uh, the the periodic tables uh, almost okay same as this one. Okay, this is the modern periodic tables. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, now what he do is. He, at the times, uh, okay, he managed to measure proton number. At Mendeleev times, they don't know about the proton number yet. They can only measure the atomic mass, the nuclear number, but they don't know about proton number. But at mostly time, they found proton number. They can measure proton number. And then so mostly say, okay, we shouldn't arrange the elements in ascending orders of nuclear number. Instead, we should arrange the elements in the ascending orders of proton number that is the major difference between Mendeleev and Moseley Mendeleev arranged the elements in the ascending orders of nuclear number nuclear number that is Mendeleev eh? nuclear number 
but mostly arranged according to the ascending orders of proton number. When he arranged the elements in the ascending orders of proton numbers, then he can solve these problems. Huh? Let me show you. He solved these problems. Okay, he solved these problems. Now, because uh, you see, uh, tellurium has nuclear number higher than uh, iodine. So therefore, uh, according to Mendeleev methods, uh, okay, this tellurium should be put behind iodine. Uh, but if we see the proton number, this is the proton number, this is the nuclear number. If we see the proton number, then we found that the proton number of tellurium is lower than iodine, and therefore it should be put before iodine. Uh, then you see, mostly mostly solve uh, Mendeleev problems. The Mendeleev he just put in front, but he don't know why. Eh? But actually, we shouldn't arrange the uh, elements in ascending orders of nuclear number. Okay, we should arrange it according to the proton number, but not the nuclear number. So arrange the elements in the periodic table according to the ascending orders of atomic number. Uh, the atomic number is a proton number, but not the atomic mass as done by Mendeleev. By using his uh, this periodic table, he managed to predict the existence of four undiscovered elements from the proton number. So that is uh, mostly yeah, mostly his contribution. Now for uh, Dobrainer, Newlands, and Mayer, okay, you just need to know this uh, Dobrainer, Lord of Triads, and uh, Newlands, Lord of Octave, okay, and Mayer, Mayer's Curve. You just need to know about this. But for Mendeleev, you need to know all of this, all his contributions, uh, all his contributions. And for mostly, you just need to know that um, he arranged the elements uh, in ascending orders of the atomic number. This one, you just need to know this one, okay, for mostly. Ascending orders of the atomic number. Atomic number is a proton number. And uh, for this, for the first three, you just need to know that Dobrainer, Lord of Triads, Newlands, Lord of Octave, Mayer, the Mayer Curve. Uh, of course, you need to know uh, uh, what, is this, what, what is this Mayer's Curve, uh, okay? Uh, plot, a, plot a graph, uh, atomic volume against atomic weight or atomic mass. Uh, okay? But for uh, Mendeleev, you need to know all of this, uh, all of this.